So this is Democracy in Action. Every day, we get closer and closer to seeing the final makeup of the next Congress. Only about seven House races still remain toss-ups. But before all the midterm races could be called, last night, Donald Trump kicked off the next election cycle. As we've discussed by now, the former president announced his campaign to win back the White House last night, but he is likely to face some of his own allies in the battle for the GOP 2024 nomination. CBS News political correspondent Caitlin Huey Burns joins us now. Hey there, Caitlin. Uh, so let's start with president, the former president's announcement. What are people across the GOP saying about his desire, now formal, to run for president? Hey, Lana. Well, I've been talking to Republicans in Washington and outside in the battleground states, and there is not a huge appetite for him announcing his run uh, the way that he did, especially after Republicans overwhelmingly underperformed expectations in the midterm elections. And many of them are, you know, attributing lots of these losses to the former president's influence. They talk about specifically losing independent voters and suburban voters. Uh, they like what the Trump has done in terms of enthusing the base, but also the base didn't turn out in the numbers that they would have if Trump were on the ticket. Uh, so they've seen a depressed base. They've seen um, hits among independent voters and these critical voters. And this is the third election in a row where uh, Republicans have lost. So uh, the appetite is not there for this run. You do, however, have a lot of Republicans saying, look, Let's see who else uh, gets in the race. Um, and, and that's kind of the big question here, is what other Republicans come up to the fore? Um, the, the, the way that, that Trump may see it is that if there are a lot of candidates that come in, uh, maybe he is able to override them because, you know, he can be one of many. If there is a rallying around a distinct challenger, that becomes a, a much more difficult battle. And what's interesting also, Caitlin, is who then becomes, mm -hmm. in a way, not the new Trump, but the new GOP star that is a few steps removed from the former president that doesn't carry that political baggage of having denied the results of the 2020 election, having mm -hmm. really done and said things that very well could have kept Republicans from the polls, according to the results of the midterms. And so we know mm -hmm. um, Florida Governor Ron DeSantis yeah. is a rising star. I've mm -hmm. been noticing uh, former U uh, the former... U.S. Ambassador to the U.N. Nikki Haley mm -hmm. is someone I keep seeing pop up. Who are the yeah. names you're looking at as potential um, kind of uh, nominees uh, for the Republican presidential run? Yeah, well, in Republic, in my conversations with Republicans, the name Ron DeSantis usually comes up because he is kind of thought of as as a Trump without the baggage, with the added bonus of governing in a critical state like Florida, and he just won re-election by 20 points. But they also point out that he's not tested on the national stage, and they point to uh, other governors who have tried to make a run for higher office who have kind of fallen uh, in in their fight to do so. But it is interesting to note, Errol, uh, Errol as you have. Have, which is, look at what the movements from some of these others have been. You saw Nikki Haley out on the campaign trail a lot. You saw some other governors out there a lot campaigning for other candidates. Um, interestingly, hearing from people like Mon Mike Pompeo, who has also been touting a run, he has been kind of subtweeting Trump today, saying that the party needs to look forward and not in the rear view. Uh, and you mm. also have, of course, former Vice President Mike Pence on the rounds, on the media circuit, uh, touting his new book that is out, where he he does show some disagreement with the former president uh, over January 6th. So that's also someone to kind of keep an eye on how he's maneuvering. He is, compared to his rival, a potential rival, someone who has been tested on the national stage, who can campaign on the Trump platform, but who has that huge disagreement with Trump and with his base of support. And he's not often talked about uh, among activists as someone that they could uh, potentially see, as much as DeSantis is. Still a long way to go, yeah. guys, of course. But the point is that uh, Republicans I've been talking to have said now there are alternatives. We just have to see how that shakes out. Yeah. Caitlin, I also want to get your take on uh, Senator Mitch McConnell winning re-election mm -hmm. as uh, the minority leader in the Senate. He was um, being challenged, which, is, which in and of itself was interesting, by mm -hmm. Senator Rick Scott of Florida. Um, what does it mean that he easily seemed to win re-election, and, and does that mean that, that the status quo is likely to continue, then, in terms of what we see in the Senate? 
Yeah, Lana, it's a really interesting question, because you did see this challenge to him that you haven't seen for a while, but the challenge was uh, perhaps the wrong messenger, uh, the wrong mm. vehicle for that challenge. I mean, it's from Rick Scott, whose uh, job this cycle in his leadership position was to get more Republicans elected to the Senate and win them in the majority. And heading into the election, he was very optimistic about gaining the majority. Uh, so there is this, uh, you know, real infighting within the Republican Party between uh, those aligned with Mitch McConnell and those working for uh, Rick Scott and the uh, organization, the NRSC, that he he chairs. Um, so a lot of Republicans are signaling, or not a lot, but but a, a number, a significant number, are signaling. Look, something has to change. We had a great environment uh, with the, you know, working in our favor with an unpopular president and the economy the way it is, and we still weren't able to uh, get good candidates and be able to overcome some of these Democratic incumbents. So what has to change? You have some Republicans in the uh, Senate conference saying it needs to be a change in leadership, or at least a discussion about mm -hmm. a change in leadership. Uh, but they didn't have a candidate who could really embody that. And a lot of McConnell's allies were saying, all right, you're going to bring up Rick Scott, who, you know, essentially was in charge of winning us back the Senate. Why is that? The well, it's interesting to go? that that discussion about can it, candidate quality is also something that we've heard in terms of explaining away the problems uh, exactly. that, the, that the Republicans Yeah, and as, as you said, Lana, look, this is democracy in action. Yeah. Voters Nothing. went to the polls, <laughs> and now the Republicans are trying to figure out how do we deliver on what voters just told us. Caitlin Huey Burns, thanks for walking us through what's happening thanks. right now. We appreciate it. Thank you.